Which team? Okay. <laughs> which team is most likely to win a championship first, the Brooklyn Nets or the New York Knicks? Ooh. Like you mean? Well, that's not really a fair question to ask me because the Knicks wait because the Knicks aren't done rebuilding. I don't know where the Brooklyn Nets are going to go after a big three of Ben Simmons, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving. It's not like those guys are a dime a dozen. It really is. It's a mental state question. (laughs) Personally, I don't think the Brooklyn Nets are winning a championship. I think they'll be better off than they were obviously last year or the season before that. I still don't think that's a championship team. I know people say, oh, it's Kevin Durant. It's Ben Simmons. It's Kyrie Irving. How can you say that? I just think that there are better teams that have been playing together longer. And I'm not convinced as a team that's even going to play the entire season together. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, will they come out of the East? Maybe I still think it's Boston's, you know, conference to win or lose, but could they come out? Sure. Do I think they're winning a championship next season? I'm still not convinced. But if I'm looking at the current make of the team, obviously Brooklyn's in a better position to go ahead and win a championship with what they have before the Knicks do. But I think when the Knicks are all said and done, I think that's going to be a really solid complete team that you'll see for more seasons together than I think we're going to get from the Brooklyn Nets. So that's a really good point that Ashley brings up is that when you look at the Nets, I think of longevity and them trying to actually build around the players that they have. I think the situation with the Brooklyn Nets is so volatile and we've talked about it over and over and over again, Holly. I mean, like obviously Kevin Durant wants to win a championship, but I don't know what's going to happen with Kyrie. I, he might show up to work one day. He might not show up to work one day. I have no idea if he even wants to play basketball. I don't know. And I mean, Kyrie Irving is probably one of the most talented players in the NBA, oh, and he should be out there playing. But we just don't know what the situation is going to hold. He might wake up one day and say, you know what? I want to take 10 days off. I don't know. I have no idea what is going on in Kyrie Irving's mind. And then on the other side of it, you got Ben Simmons. And who knows what's happening with him behind the scenes and that chemistry with the team and a lot of things that happened during the offseason, the stories that have come out, coming out of the group chat, like all kinds of weird stuff have come <laughs> yeah, out I of love Brooklyn that, one. that just not really, love the group yeah, chat just, one. Not it just only makes that, me feel like I can't, you can't trust that team on paper. Yes, like they are super talented. They are super talented and they should come out of the East and they should win an NBA title. But the fact is all the off the court stuff is what's going to hold them back, not only this season, but beyond, because we don't even know if they're going to stay together. Not only that, but I think my concern, not, you know, Kyrie obviously is Kyrie Irving, you know, for all the skill that he has. He has a lot of other things off the court, but for Ben Simmons, I think what I'm looking at is, you know, anyone who's ever had an issue with their back, back surgery knows that it can kind of pop up and bother you at any given time, especially, you know, if you're constantly working it, you know, and that just goes to something as small as a herniated disc to something on a much bigger scale. It just takes one wrong movement one wrong tweak and all of a sudden you're experiencing back pain all over again. So that's always a possibility. But then also I'm looking at Ben Simmons has always been guilty of defensively incredible, can guard every position one through five. You cannot talk about him when it comes to defense, but offensively he's always been guilty of his skill set kind of just hitting a plateau and never really taking the effort to make it hit another level. It's kind of consistently been the same. The things that he needs to work on, he's never really given the true attention to. So when you look at his offense from when he first got into the NBA to where he is now, there's not much of a difference. And yeah, when you're on a team with Kevin Durant, with Kyrie Irving, and they have some some other supporting guys, he may not be expected to score as much but you still need to go ahead and give me 16 to 20 and if you can't get that in the paint how else are you going to give it to me because if they know he's going to exist in the paint because that's his bread and butter he can always go up for a layup he can always you know do a little hook shot he is seven feet tall but if the paint is blocked where are you going to go and I think that if he's worked on his game that being taken away from him should it make a difference but he's never shown us that offensively he really gives much attention to that aspect of his game. All right. I want you both to to answer this one. All right. Um, If you really think about it, if you step back, Kevin Durant, uh, depending on your ranking, like some people say he's the best player in the league. I don't think I have many, many people I've heard have him below number five 
in the league. So a top five player in the league says, I want to be traded. He averaged 30 points a game last year, damn near 30 points a game. He has some injuries, so he didn't play a full season. And that guy, not only was he not traded, but certain teams said, nah, we're not doing that. Like Memphis, okay, Memphis just blew my mind, said, okay, we're not trading John Moran. I wouldn't expect you to. But we're not we're not trading Jaron Jackson. We're not play, we're not trading Desmond Bain. Anybody, but you can't have these guys. I'm like, wait a minute. You wouldn't trade Desmond Bain for Kevin Durant. I'm like, it, it, it's amazing. I... Did did the rest of the league get it right? Or is somebody going to say, what the hell were we thinking? We had a chance to get Kevin Durant and we didn't want to trade. We didn't want to give up our second, third, fourth best player. It depends really on what side of the coin you're on, right? So if you're on the coin of instant gratification and instant success and taking the gamble for what they call a, you know, a popcorn or a microwave championship, then you would say, yeah, the league was wrong. Now you got to take some of these proposed trades with a grain of salt because some of them sound a little far-fetched. Some of them sound a little fairy tale. Some of them sound a little asinine. So again, I'm taking them with a grain of salt. But if you're on the side of like, let's throw all these pieces together and hope that in the three years, four years that they have together, we win a chip, then yeah, you say that teams miss out on Kevin Durant. If you're on the other side of the conversation where I tend to go ahead and exist, then you believe in longevity. You believe in teams who've kind of gone through the quote unquote dark ages of, you know, the glory days that they once knew and did the work, whether it was a free agency, whether it was drafting and watch this team get back to that trajectory. You look at the Boston Celtics, you look at the Memphis Grizzlies, you look at um, the Cleveland Cavaliers, you look at the Miami Heat, you look at some of these other teams in the NBA who've gone through the motions to rebuild this team little by little each season. And now they're on the trajectory of where they're constantly in the postseason or will start to be consistently in the postseason and are working towards that championship with a culture, with a familiarity between coaching staff, front office, team. I tend to think that that's more beneficial in the long term than trying to throw a bunch of guys together and hope it works. We've seen it with the Lakers. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. Like, it worked with the Warriors, but they were already a dynasty before Kevin Durant got there. It worked with the Miami Heat, but it took them a year, too, to figure it out. So it depends where you fall in that equation. No, I, I totally agree with you, actually. I think that a lot of teams around the league, they were looking at the fact that they have these young players, these young stars on the rise that they want to build around. And the reality is that although Kevin Durant is one of the best players in the NBA, top scorers in the NBA, he's also about to hit his mid-30s. And we don't know if he's going to be playing healthy for however many long or or also the fact that, you know, how long is he going to stay on your team? Like, let's not forget his contract extension doesn't even start till this upcoming season. And so you have Brooklyn who is like, OK, we gave you this max contract extension before you even started that contract. You just said, all right, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere else. Y'all need to fire the GM. Y'all need to fire the head coach or y'all going to choose me. And then I think that a lot of front offices look at that situation. It was like. I don't think I want to deal with that. Like, we got a young core that we're building around, that we're in the playoffs. You're talking about teams like Ashley mentioned, like the Grizzlies, talking about the Miami Heat, talking about Boston, the situation here. And Holly, you know how crazy people went when they talked about trading Jalen Brown. Like, people were not trying to have oh, yeah. Jalen Brown go anywhere yeah. outside of Boston. Yeah. I, and honestly, I couldn't agree more because of the fact that they got to the NBA Finals last season so i think that's the way that front offices looked at it but also i looked at this situation and i said honestly the nets played it very well like they didn't want kd to go anywhere and they made the trade scenarios so outrageous right. so exactly. that way front offices will be like you know what i mean i know it's kd but i'm not giving up my young stars <laughs> i'm not giving up an all-star right. right. i'm not giving up all these picks yeah, and a good all rotational that. player Exactly. Yeah. I think it was more so the, the Brooklyn Nets playing the situation well as opposed to these other teams looking and saying, you know what, we missed out on KD. They didn't miss out on nothing. The Brooklyn Nets, they weren't trying to give them up. Mm -hmm. That's true. I, I, listen, well, look, before before we go, I got these two fashion icons here, Ashley Nicole Moss and, and, and Mina Smith. And so I got to take advantage of this, your, your, your fashion eye, your fashion expertise. All right. Brooklyn brought out the Stars and Stripes jersey. There it is. 
Oh, there it is. I think that thing is flawless. Okay, that thing is flawless. I, I want to hear, especially you, Ashley. You know, you're a Knicks fan. So I, I feel like if you give this props, then I can validate it for real. It's certified because if a Knicks fan thinks it's fly, it's really fly. So start with you. Tell me about fashion wise. What, what are we doing here? I mean, fly is a little exaggeratory. Um, I'm not going to go that far. Um, but it's historic, and I tend to like historic jerseys. I like vintage throwbacks. Um, so I think it's dope. I think it's a cool way to kind of honor the, the history of the OG Nets. Not the Brooklyn Nets, but the OG Nets. Um, but I'm not going to say The New York the, Nets. The New yeah, York I'm not, Nets, not, not the New Jersey. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say it's the flyest jersey in New York City. You know, that belongs to us, the New York Knicks. But, you know, they could be second if they want to. <laughs> as you, they always going to be second. Let's just be honest. I, I don't know why people make right. it seem as if there's, like, a real divide in New York where people are fighting over being Knicks and Nets fans. Like, in my world, that does not exist. I don't meet that many people where it's just like, oh, my gosh, I've been a Nets fan my whole life. Okay, yeah, sure. Anyway, but um, <laughs> but yeah, looking at the jersey, it's cute. I wouldn't say it's the best thing I've ever seen. I do love when, you know, teams, they kind of pay homage to, you know, the old stuff, old days, back in the day. That's always great. But again, it's it's all right, Holly. I, I want to say it. Oh, right. man, y'all are tough. I need, uh, okay, okay. I need, I need my Knicks to bring back the old school 90s Knicks jerseys with the black stripe going down the side that Latrell Sprewell used to rock, Allen Houston used to rock, the one of the 90s. Now that was a fly jersey, okay? Now Shout that out was something that you can get got, off with I got fit. my first, I got my first Latrell Sprewell jersey, I think when I was in fourth grade and I thought I was the flyest girl that came <laughs> I still have <laughs> mine. Hang it, listen, that was a fly jersey. Now that, when we talking about fly, that's what we mean when we say fly. I'm gonna have to look okay? into it. That was cool, I'm gonna have to look into it. fly. Hey, I, I, okay, I'll check them all out now. I mean, you, 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 you forced me to go back and do my Google images and just look at all the jerseys over the years. I, but I just think uh, y'all a tough crowd. I'm gonna say y'all a tough crowd because I just think these images of Julius Irving with the fro flowing, red, white, and blue basketball, ABA. I mean, I'm, I get, I'm just getting nostalgic for that. But okay, all right. It's a vibe. I'm gonna listen. It's, 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 cool. it's cool. It's cool. It's cute. Song. I'll listen to the expert. <laughs> I appreciate you, Ashley. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.